Well, happy Saturday evening. I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. I'm a Dixie Belle content creator, and I'm here on Dixie Belle's Facebook page to hang out with you guys, do a little painting, do a little demonstration, maybe give you some tips and techniques that might help you, or maybe just show you some products that might inspire you to do something on your project. Tonight, we have this French Provincial nightstand and dresser set. I do have a mirror off to the side, and I'm going, what I'd, I would just call it classy. But, uh, tonight, I'm gonna demonstrate several techniques. We're gonna be a, a little bit varied in our things I'm gonna show. So I hope you're ready to see a lot of variety and uh, definitely make sure you're following Bowtie Treasures. First of all, base coat for this. I, uh, besides doing your prep, one of the big things I like to do on these French Provincial pieces that have the laminate top is I did use Slick Stick. Be sure to follow the instructions on the slick stick when you're doing that. Outside of that, the next thing I did was paint it one coat of Midnight Sky. That's my base color. And uh, then I am going to be blending Gravel Road with Midnight Sky tonight. I'll show you how I did that. And then I also, uh, last night, I worked a little bit of caviar into the lower areas of the piece. And I, if we can, I'll show you that tonight. But uh, if not, definitely check out my my live from last night but definitely uh, caviar was used i just really wanted to give it a nice dark base on the camera it's a little subtle here's gravel road about right here's midnight sky and then this is caviar so it's just a very subtle when i get this all done and top coat it's just going to have this really rich classy look and if you like that you're in the right place to see how i did this piece tonight so those are the three colors and then i also will be using gold and black gilding wax and I'm going to demonstrate that. In fact, I think it'd be kind of cool if we, look, there goes my paint. Uh, let's start with that part because I'd like to probably get this nightstand off of here. I had two tables going last night. So this is the side of the nightstand. This is just my hand rubbing on it. So don't ignore that part. When I top coat that, that smudge will go away. But the top is gravel road, about midnight sky in here, caviar on the lower sections. And I also did some shading on the edges for, uh, with caviar. So a few techniques happening. I've demonstrated the shading a lot on Dixie Bells Live and on my Facebook. And you can always check out my YouTube channel, Bowtie Treasures, and see a lot of these techniques there. But I wanna demonstrate real quick before we get too far, and I'm, I'm gonna take this off. This is uh, one of Dixie Bell's stencils. And this is the, uh, I believe it's the Royal Dama Damask uh, stencil, yeah. And you can, it's what it says there at the bottom. Um, what I'm gonna do is, I haven't used the black gilding wax a lot. Gold is my favorite. There's several colors to choose from. You definitely need to go check out Dixie Bell's gilding wax selection. And I want to show you how, you can do what I'm doing right now. You could probably do with caviar if you just want, or a dark gray, but I thought it'd be nice to have a little bit of a shine to it. And let's try it with one of my favorite brushes with the stencil is the round small. And you can see that here. And I always highlight the fact that the round small has a nice blunt top to it. And uh, so that's why I like to use this brush. In just a moment, I'll come back and I will demonstrate. Uh, we'll get to the blending, but, I, but the, since this is on top of our project, I thought I'd go ahead and start here, just a little bit of variety. So I have several techniques I want to show you. So I'm just going to tap my brush into the cap, into the black gilding wax. And all I'm going to do is swirl it around in there. And I'm not looking to go edge to edge with this. I like a, my stencils. I'm more of a feathered, faded, uh, just kind of softly faded out. But if you like the idea of going edge to edge, top to bottom, the nice thing about this stencil is that it is a repetitive stencil in nature, so you can just keep going with it. I just wanted it to be a little bit towards the middle, and I wanted it to pop on the gravel road a little bit. So I'm gonna 
fold this back and we'll just take a look and see how that looks. And you have to really uh, strive here for not expecting this to be perfect because uh, not every parts are going to get the same level of stencil quantity. So I like how it's fading out. That's kind of the worn, worn look I'm going for. I don't know if another way of describing it is almost like a classy Victorian. That Royal Damask just kind of helps set that apart. So what I will be doing is I will top coat this later, but because Dixie Bell's gilding waxes are oil based, you definitely want to give them some time to dry really well. Another thing I'm going to do on this project is I painted the hardware Midnight Sky as well because they were white with gold highlights and I didn't want my I didn't want the hardware the white to show on my dresser so I'm just going to take a brush and the gold gilding wax and all I'm going to do here is just drag the brush across the top and pop that gold back in so I really want this this hardware to look worn I don't want it to be perfect I only put one coat of midnight sky on this hardware so you can almost even see brush strokes and I like to look at the top too so isn't that beautiful how that gold gilding wax really pops on the the distance I put I put gold on the, the feet of this and this is another technique that I'll be doing on this dresser is I will just come in here on and right now I am this is the nightstand but I'll just put a little bit of you can do this with a your finger or another brush type but I'm just hitting the edges this will help tie the whole piece together and match the hardware I don't normally put my nightstands on my dresser, but tonight I thought it was gonna be, it would be easier to demonstrate that way. So you, you can see how the brush would help apply it, but also maybe keep the gold gilding wax off your fingers, whatever works for you. I've done both. And the other thing I did on the other side is I just also hit the top of this piece. I'll probably do more and usually I'll oftentimes do this last. You can do this step after you top coat or before. If you feel like you're losing too much of the luster, then feel free to do it after you top coat. I, I find with Gil Dixie Bell's Gilding Wax, it keeps its luster really well even after I top coat. So I oftentimes put it on first. But if you're seeing a lot of like dusty, that's because I did a light sand. Usually between coats, I'll use Dixie Bell's sanding sponge and just give it a nice smooth coat. This feels so smooth, like silk, just beautiful. And so between layers of paint, it's usually a good idea to do that. So let me see here. Let me see if I can just, I don't know if I could show you guys the other side. I don't know if it really matters, but if the camera will let me do it. There's the other side. You can see that it's got the stencil on it as well. Let me just get this to the side. Get my workout in. But that part, we'll call that part. All right. Hope everybody's doing good. All right, let's work on the blending. Okay. So I, as I mentioned before, one coat of Midnight Sky. Just a while ago, I did light sand just to get rid of any kind of specks or anything that's in the way. And now we're ready for blending. Oh, there's my uh, black gilding wax lid, found it. Okay, there's a lot of ways to blend. I'm kind of uh, happy you're welcome to try whatever you'd like, but usually I would have something like a, blend, a uh, misting bottle handy. The reason for that is that it helps keep the paint wet and blendable. So have that handy. You can, you, you'll want to get some kind of uh, blending brush. 
Now Dixie Belle's Best Sting brush is really great. It's big, it's flat, you can swirl it around. I've got an old oval small and it's seen a few projects, but it's already kind of has that little bit of a feathered. So that works too. Okay, gravel road. Got to have a gravel road. That's the top light color. Okay, this is the base coat of Midnight Sky. We'll not be using caviar in the blending, but as I mentioned before, I did caviar towards the bottom and I did shading with caviar. I'm not sure that we'll be able to do the shading tonight. But like I said, I have a lot of videos that shows how to do that. I'm gonna use the flat medium because one thing I like about the flat medium is that it's perfect size for dipping into the eight ounce jar. The mini can kind of can fit, but after a while, the mini is too wide for the jar for me conveniently. So that's why you'll see me using this. But for the large surface, the, the mini would be good. Okay, for my blending, I'm not taking gravel road all the way down. So technically I could almost just paint midnight sky where I'm blending. Cause if I start painting all of the bottom, it's going to start drying or paint the bottom and work your way up. And when you get to about right here, get ready to blend. Okay. So I think I might try that. Let's do that. Let's work from the bottom down, bottom up. Unfortunately, or I'm not really going to get all the way down to the ground, but I have been known to miss a spot or two on things that are really low, but I'll come back. This foot that I'm painting down there that right now will get a coat of caviar. So I don't have to be perfect with this midnight sky, but I do want to go ahead and get a coat of paint on it because I want to keep the caviar fairly light. When I say light, almost like a blended. For my blending, I want to bring it around to this corner. So I'm going to put a little paint there, but we'll come back to that in a second. If you've ever painted with dark colors, you probably will agree with me and like to hear your thoughts on it, but you'll probably find that the darker colors are thicker. There's just more pigment to it. So oftentimes I find I either need to, that I usually need to use, uh, have my mister bottle handy when I'm painting dark colors, just because of the extra pigments that are in the paint. I don't always do it, but sometimes you could add a little bit of water to it, you know, just a touch, just to soften the paint up, especially if, like if I've had, the, had this can container open for quite a while, starts evaporating a little bit I can already feel if it feels sticky and is not sliding your paints probably not thin enough so just put a little bit of mist on it that loosens that up a little bit because you don't want thick paint that just leads to heavy brush strokes and that's not really the great look so we painted the bottom this is the second coat of midnight sky we're getting to the point now where we're going to be blending here soon. So at some point, be ready. You need to have your supplies ready, like the paint open, your brush ready. I think I'll probably use an oval small to apply my gravel road. Last night on my live on my Facebook, Bowtie Treasures Facebook page, it was almost more like a trial and error. It happens a lot on my Friday Night Lives, just making sure I got the techniques down. Um, so I always welcome you guys there. We have a little bit more of a casual time where I can, we can talk. We talked about favorite styles and techniques of furniture and painting, things like that. So that was fun. Tonight, usually for my Dixie Bell Lives, I'm oftentimes busy packing in as much tips and helps and things like that as possible. Okay, I'm just getting the paint on. I'm not trying to be fancy right now because I know I'm gonna blend. Keep your Mr. Bottle handy in case you feel like it's just not smooth. Okay, we got the paint on. I'm gonna give it a quick mist. I don't want any of that to dry yet. I'm gonna take this oval, oval small. And I'm going to just 
be pretty liberal with it, okay? I'm not trying to... What, because, of, because I'm painting over wet, darker paint, basically we are mixing, by using the word blending, we're mixing these two colors together. So just, I'm getting a liberal amount of paint on there. It's nice and smooth, nice and wet. You can use this brush to mix the two colors together a little bit. All right, so just get it on there. Your gra my gravel road's getting darker because I'm mixing it in. And here's where I'm gonna take the bigger brush. And we're just going to swirl that in there. That's why you could, if you remember, I really was just brushing, putting the coat on there. I have a wet brush next to me just to unload some of that extra paint. So this is a nice brush for a, light, a, light, a nice large area. If you need to go side to side, you can. I really hate that I, I uh, dipped my other oval small in the water because I, like I like to use it a little bit to fine tune a little bit. So I'm just working back down into the into the midnight sky. And you don't, you really can't blend very well sticky. So just leave it. If if you got, if you nailed it, great. Now this brush I'm I'm picking up only has midnight sky in it, and I'm just touching up a couple of spots. But I'm just being very soft, very light-handed, and I'm going to leave it alone. Okay, so same principle. Let me get my midnight sky back out, and uh, let me start from the bottom. Quickly work my way up. So if you, another thing you could do, if you do more paint, you can almost like just spread it on there and just kind of move it around. But always come back and make sure you're smoothing it out in the same direction, like this. So if you ever have too much paint, go the opposite direction, spread it out, and then smooth it out. Light hand, right now, very much about a quarter pressure and just smooth it out. Okay, I can see a spot right here that's a little dry. All right, so we gotta get, keep this wet. Using Dixie Bell's Mr. Bottle, put that paint down. So let's get this paint on here. You remember we just kind of slapped it on there, spread it out. I like having a decent amount of paint to work with. Now, I don't have the spot memorized where I stopped on the other side. The nice thing is nobody's going to check me on that. All I need to worry about right now, it's a little tacky, is uh, just getting a, a general amount of paint. What I don't want is to have not enough paint because based on the, the nightstand experience, it gets a little, t it's, there's not enough visible blend and I want more blend. Okay. So I've got the best thing brush again. We're just going to blend those in together. Wipe off any excess. Gotta make sure I get around the corner. You're, you're basically making fluffy clouds, right? This is not the only way to blend. This is just the way I'm demonstrating it tonight. You can do kind of a wisping motion. I've demonstrated that before. But the best thing brush has kind of changed blending large surfaces for the better. And it's okay to kind of, you know, not always do circles. And I'm wiping off. As far as pressure, I'd say I'm about 
20, 25% pressure. I'm not pushing too hard. It's more about sliding the brush than it is pushing hard. You push hard, you're just going to scrape the paint. Let me just see how I did on the other side. If I didn't quite nail the other side, I'll, I'll figure that out. I need to get my brush right in that corner a little bit. There we go. And honestly, and I mentioned this on the other side, you don't really know sometimes exactly quite how you did until it's all dry. And then just know when to stop. Okay, so right here, it was sticky, so I went too far down. I need to stop. Okay, we'll do that. We'll stop right there. Looking good. And this is this is another reason, creative designers and painters, that techniques like the the, uh, the stencil, putting a stencil on here, if you feel like I just can't get the blending perfect and smooth, sometimes you can disguise it with the stencils and other techniques. So the stencil diverts the attention from maybe a hard blend or something. Not that I'm doing the texture, but I have found that sometimes knowing that I'm doing the, the uh, stencil, I'm like, you know, it's going to hide that. I can, I can make a little bit of a mistake and I'm not overstress about it. So that hopefully that helps you get you that idea. So that's how I blended the nightstand and the dresser sides. Okay. So what I'm doing right now, just what I did on the sides, is I painted all the sections around that I where I wasn't going to blend. So I'm just getting the second coat of Midnight Sky on there everywhere that I'm not blending. So you don't, because as soon as you get paint where you're blending, the clock's ticking and it's, a, it's starting to dry on you. So be quick. So we'll do a couple drawers. I'm watching the time, we're doing great. I did a French provincial dresser maybe a month ago or a little less, and it had it was it was a this exact brand, a different purchase, but it was a Henry Link, but it was only six drawers. And I on that one I demonstrated I, I demonstrated that I'm trying to remember if I was live for that, but on that one I actually put color dark in the middle. And this one I'm not gonna really dark in the middle. It's gonna kinda happen because I'm blending the front. So just a quick mist, switch brushes, get gravel road. Now, since this space is smaller with my oval small, I can kind of start mixing those colors together pretty good. I'm not really, uh, I'm not really blending, I guess, as much as I am mixing. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that the outer edges are not darker. I'm just mixing those two colors together and lightening the panel. But I'm using the same, um, same brushes, if you will. So all I did in this case was mix the colors, and, and um, which is the same as blending. I just didn't fade it out, does that make sense? So it just lightened the panel up. What I could do, I've got a, brush or something right there. What I could do is I could put just a little bit of paint here and fade it out to midnight sky, but I just like to, I like the look of accentuating the panel. And guess what that's going to do? That's going to make that hardware jump off of this, this piece. So let's do another one and we'll see where we are on time. But on this one, let's go with a bigger drawer. And just a quick tip, by the way, if you notice, I've got some blue tape here. That's just so I have a nice clean line when I paint into the cabinet, take this off, I have a nice clean line. I really want to have a top notch look there and that's a good way of doing it. It takes more time, but I do like the look of it. is more like you're almost kind of doing a more of an ombre where you can see a blend and I'm not really doing that here. Okay. Okay. 
Last night, I gave tips on how to paint the top. So if you need some techniques on how to paint tops nice and smooth, maybe that's what we should do to finish off. What do you guys think? You want to see me paint the top? Or is there something else that uh, maybe Dixie Bell can give me a suggestions on how we can finish out tonight? I know I'm covering a lot of stuff, but that was the plan. Overdose on awesome techniques, right? So here again, I can go left and right. I'm not really. I just want it all to be a mix between those two colors. So it's not solid gravel road. So again, maybe Dixonville has some suggestions of something either being asked a lot or something I missed. I'll look up here in just a second. I'm just touching up where I uh, would have gotten gravel road where I didn't really want it. I already mentioned that I painted this last night on my live and then I sanded it with Dixie Bell's sanding sponge, which I may have put away. And the reason why I do that is because you want to get rid of anything that doesn't feel smooth. And I'm feeling something. I don't know where it came from. Maybe something right here. Where'd it go? I don't know what that is, but this is so fine that you really aren't going to dig into the, into the paint. It's, but it's silky smooth. It's so nice. And you'll see little white specks, and that's specks from the uh, slick stick. Well, I like to also sand between top coats, so we'll do that. Okay, we'll work our way down here in the next few minutes, and I'll just give you as many pointers. The key here is that people complain about, how do you get rid of brush strokes? Well, usually brush strokes happen. Let me just be clear. Um, brush, brush strokes are gonna happen because um, you're using a brush. I know that's obvious, but second of all, you're probably using too much paint. Okay, so first all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and paint the sides. As I mentioned before, I'm gonna keep the mister handy because the paint's a little thicker. Make sure you mix your paint good. If you haven't used it in a while so you can see how I just did this but because I did that I've got goop going down the side so what I like to do on this part is go this way counter the direction you might say well that messes it up but I'm also going over the side does that make sense but now what I can do is I can get the brush strokes going in the right way don't let that dry but I always find it seems to work better for me to paint against the top's grain and then I can smooth it out just because I can do the whole turn part. So that's how I usually start that, okay? So the other thing I usually do is not paint on this side. Usually I'm on the other side where my back's the camera, but I think this is better for the live tonight. Okay, so just make sure you don't let that dry. Now, because, I like to keep it smooth. This is where I'm using the mister. I demonstrated this last night, but watch how I go this way, which is not ideal. But the reason why I do that is because now I can smooth that out. I'm keeping my paint wet because I want to keep this thin and smooth. Okay, and feel free to zigzag that. You have working time. So now we're going to smooth it out. 10% pressure. Okay, you see that? It should be shiny, smooth. The brush strokes will set, what you could even find are brush strokes will work its way out. So don't hesitate to go this way. This gets the paint on. Now I can kind of work it around. I'm getting it so there's no high points. I'm having to use a little bit more water tonight just because the paint's thick. Go all in the same direction, light pressure, smooth it out. This is how you have a beautiful smooth top. We'll just keep going. You should be able to tell where you left off last.
work into the previous area and then smooth it out. Night. I'm kind of putting the brush at an anger angle, very soft touch. And I'm just going to keep doing that all the way down. Is that making sense? Hopefully, I don't know if that enlightens anybody to how they sh they could try doing their tops, but this is how I pretty much wound up doing most of all my tops that I'm hand painting. Okay. And I'm kind of tilting my head a little bit. I'm looking for any, any areas I may have missed or that's too thick. So on the end, remember what I said a while ago? wet and then I like to work the end first because follow the serpentine curve. Oh, there goes my water bottle. And then we'll put some paint down. And smooth it out in the right direction. It's already getting sticky right here. Paints thin should dry quick and maybe just a couple touch-ups on the lip. We're done. I'm just touching up where I couldn't see while I was painting. So that, that went really well, in my opinion, um, as far as timing goes, just because one, I was using the mini brush. I worked quickly, but it's smooth like smooth glass just look for anything that you might have drug too much paint along the edge you want to kind of smooth that out but be careful so i'm just telling y'all you can do this and you can make this feel like you can make your tops look incredible you just need the right amount of paint right amount of technique as far as smoothing it out but i hope that was helpful i packed it with a lot of stuff because this, this piece this project is using a lot of techniques and I'm excited to see them all come together. I need a few days to get it done. But if you're following me on uh, Bowtie Treasures and Dixie Bell's Chalk Paint Enthusiast Group, you'll probably see me posting this later next week, maybe around Thursday, we'll see. And uh, I'm excited to see it all come together. Still got a lot of work to do. But uh, one step at a time is all you can do. And tonight we just made a few more steps and I'm glad I could share that with you. Uh, if there's any questions, please drop those in before you go so I can uh, check those out here in the next few minutes. Uh, I know that uh, there's so much to learn and try and do, but sometimes the best thing you can do is just practice and give it a try. But hopefully if you um, bookmark this live tonight, you can go back and watch it. And then eventually I'll have it on my YouTube channel too. So I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. I'm a content creator for Dixie Bell. It's been a pleasure painting with you tonight. Y'all take care, have a good night. Do something creative. We'll see you later. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.